In this video, we'll talk about four ways you can save computer power in your Reaper projects. Thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Stay tuned to the end for their special offer. All right, let's jump into it with the first example here. I've got a project here that has six different guitar parts, a, a bass part, and then a whole bunch of drum tracks with MIDI drums. And they have processing on them, guitar amps, there's the Helix native plugin. Having just a few of those plugins in here makes the, the project really choppy. If I'm at a point in the project where I don't need to record anymore, I can go ahead and increase my audio buffer size. There's always a shortcut at the top of the Reaper window to get to your audio devices. And so just hit audio device settings. And in here, I have 64 as my requested block size, which is a very small block size for low latency recording. Works great for recording guitars. But now that I'm mixing and processing tracks, I actually don't need that in there anymore. So. Um, my CPU was about 40%, 42-ish percent uh, playing back this project. I'm going to increase my buffer size up to 1024, which is a moderately high buffer size. And that gives Reaper and the audio device more time to process the audio. And so now when I play this back, or even just idle, it's dropped down at least 10%. So now it's averaging 28 to 30% CPU. Next, we're gonna look at rendering effects to items. So I have some effect guitars here. These guitars are taking about two and a half percent of my CPU each. So this is something that I would like to consolidate, but I also want some flexibility in um, post-production even after this point. So I wanna just apply the guitars, uh, gu guitar amp effects to this item. So here's what this section sounds like. Some left and right pick scrapes. I think it sounds pretty cool. What we're going to do here is um, I'm going to actually select all of these items here. Right click. I'm going to apply track effects to items as a new take with a mono output. So if I zoom in on this item here, take one is my original direct guitar, and take two is the output of the amp applied to that item. So I can bypass the effects on the track and it sounds the same. I'll just do that on the left and right here. So I've got that pick scrape effect and I'm actually going to add two new tracks so that I can um, work with those independently. And so I'll take these guitars and move them down and these guitars, move them up. These tracks here, two and three, which for good habit, I'll rename. And I'll make sure that those are panned. Now, at this point, have I actually saved CPU? No, not really. Uh, I've just moved an effect from the track to an item and printed that. The actual CPU load is the same as it was before, uh, but we could do that to the entire track, not just the section of it. Um, and you can see here the pick scrapes taking zero CPU, uh, just a little tiny bit of disk access to run those. But these other tracks, let's take these left and right guitars, which are these heavy guitars. I'll solo these. I'll take those two. And in this case, I'll right click and I'm going to use the track freeze. So render slash freeze tracks. I'm going to freeze these tracks to mono. It's going to apply those settings to the items, replacing the items, and taking those effects off the track. So I'm just going to take a second to run this, and I'm doing this on two tracks simultaneously. And there we go. It replaced those items in the project with locked items, post effects, and um, any automation on the track is still there. So this volume automation is still there. And panning and all that is all there as it was before. And that's taking up zero CPU for those uh, four tracks now. Looking at the performance metering here, things have dropped a little bit. We're now down to 24% CPU. So now to save even more CPU in this project, I'm going to take the, the lo-fi guitars and the bass 
and render those down or actually freeze them down into um, mono tracks. Depending on your project, you'll want to use either mono or stereo or multi-channel. Um, there's no examples in, in this project where I wouldn't use uh, stereo or multi-channel, but you would use stereo if it was like a synth or something like that. In this case, I'm using a mono guitar going into a mono amp. And if there is a little bit of reverb in the actual tones, uh, it doesn't really matter because I'm panning the output of the track anyways. So I'm going to render these to mono. So freezing those tracks actually dropped my CPU now to only 12%. And so let's hear this project now. Still playing perfectly. And the really cool thing about freezing is that you can undo it. So you're like, oh, you know, I want to change that tone a little bit. Just right click, go to render freeze tracks and click on unfreeze. It's going to bring back the original item, the original effects. Everything's going to back, going back to the way it was. And now I've got the effect on the track, and I can see those settings here. So I can change the EQ, change the amp, anything I want to do. We'll just freeze this again before we move on. Now it's time to talk about our sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with thousands of classes on art, design, productivity, and more. They're one of my favorite places to go to learn. I never feel bad about spending a couple hours learning on Skillshare. It uh, works great on my iPad. I, I love just sitting in the bed or sitting in a comfy chair and, and going through some of the classes on Skillshare. As I said before, there are thousands of classes. There's always something new to learn there, and I think you guys are really going to like it. Intro to Digital Audio Recording. Learn the basics of Reaper DAW from Brian Knapp. This is a great little class. I think you guys will like it if you're into using Reaper, and you can try this out for free. The first 1,000 people to use the link in the description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. If you want to stay on for a full year, it's only about $10 a month. I think it's super worth it. I really enjoy it, and I think you will too. Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. So we talked about buffer size, rendering effects to items, track freeze, and now let's look at the last option, subprojects. Subprojects is a really cool way of converting a bunch of tracks or items into new Reaper projects that work inside of a Reaper project. So I want to do this with my drums because of the effects that I have on this drum track and the parallel compression with the drums crush bus and the three reverbs that I'm using. I can't directly freeze this. I actually have to put in another track above the drums. We'll call this drum stem. So inserting a track, calling it drum stem. Let me show you what happens if you create a sub project Move to subproject warning. Tracks contain non-trivial routing that will be affected by move to subproject. Seven sends to tracks in parrot project. Do you wish to continue? Routing will be removed. If you're okay with that, you hit okay, but this is a very important warning that your mix is going to change. So we're gonna hit cancel here. I'll use that drum stems track and make that a folder. So now this is all of my drums, my parallel compression, and the three reverbs all inside of one folder. And this is safe to render to a subproject now. So right click, move tracks to new subproject. And it starts rendering the drums. We've got the silence at the beginning and now it's rendering the drum part and then it's gonna stop when it gets to this marker here uh, called equals end. And that's pretty quick, 20 seconds to render that drum track. And it's gone back into my original project and replaced all of those tracks. I think it was like 20 tracks with a stereo mix. So I've got uh, the stereo file here, which sounds exactly as it was um, originally. And the cool thing is you can double click on this and it's gonna open up that sub project as a new Reaper project. We can see the original MIDI items and we have all of the tracks here just as they were before. And all of my effects are here. So 26 tracks in the sub project that bounces down into a single stem, non-destructive. Plus you can even move this around. You can 
you can edit this further. You can apply effects to the the overall output of this. And yeah, it just opens up in new tabs. So let's make a change to this. So I've got contacts here. I'm using the Bo Burchell signature series drums here from Room Sound. And I'll just change this. I'll just change the snare. And if I play this back, sure, it sounds good. When I close this sub project or if I hit save, it's going to start rendering that again because I've make it I made a change to this project. By the way, this is a 32-bit floating point render that it's doing here. So if there's ever any clipping or anything like that, uh, it's all kind of it's all non-destructive, and you could just uh, normalize the file or turn it down or whatever, and you'll remove any distortion there. That new snare is updated in my master project, and the actual CPU in this project is only five percent now. That's pretty amazing difference from almost 45% down to 5%. Let's hear this. And something you need to watch out for, sometimes the freeze will actually cut off the, the tail end of an item. So um, sometimes extending the length of the item a little bit uh, can help. It's a good thing that we checked. And there you go, guys. There's four different ways you can save some CPU in your Reaper projects. And I think some of these tips can apply to pretty much anyone, anyone that's got the latest and greatest uh, supercomputer, just for organizational things. As you're taking a break, maybe freeze some tracks, your projects will run more smoothly. Uh, it's great to kind of commit to some sounds uh, using some of these tips. Hopefully this has been helpful, and thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon, and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.